What's up, people? This is the Nature Girl 30 here, and as you can see, I am wearing my do rag, which means it is late. It's just uh, now that 20 uh, that 2011 is pretty much on its way out the door, and 2012 is right around the corner. It kind of made me think of the state of the WWE. Yeah, you would honestly think about that, but for real. It kind of makes me sad because it brings me back during the days of when I actually became a wrestling fan. I, I mean, I became a wrestling fan in like way back in the 80s when I was around six years old. That's when I actually got into wrestling from my uncle before he passed away. God rest his soul. But honestly, I was a huge wrestling fan then because not only did my uncle make it fun, he was a huge Hulk Hogan fan and, and Randy Savage fan. And we watched it like every single time the, the uh, every single time WWE came on the air, even when they had their Saturday night um, wrestling matches, we watched those. We watched pretty much anything wrestling. And then at that time, you know, me being a female, you kind of felt weird about actually watching wrestling surrounded by nothing but a bunch of guys. But when you actually saw the divas come out there, a sensational Sherry would forever go down as one of my favorite divas. And and as well as Luna and as well as um, uh, Sunny. I mean, and I love Sable because Sable could bring it. But honestly, those women really made you feel, as a woman uh, that loves wrestling, that it didn't make you feel weird for liking wrestling because these women could bring it just as much as the guys. I mean, for crying out loud, they could body slam a woman twice their size. And it made you feel like, okay, these, these women can handle themselves. You know, I don't feel so weird liking wrestling anymore. And... And I actually did like it, and you know, and that's what really inspired me to be a wrestling fan. Besides Hulk Hogan, I loved Hulk Hogan, but the for the woman side of it, seeing the divas and how they are, that they don't, you know, they don't make you feel weird. They weren't Barbie dolls back then. They were beautiful, but they were actually promoted more for their talent than their looks. I can't say the same thing about it now. I mean, the fact that Kelly Kelly is definitely getting all these pushes and. The fact that she was a Divas champion, I'm not hating on the fact that she was a Divas champion because she has improved greatly over the years, so I can't totally hate on her. But the fact that she last, um, this past Monday, rolled up Beth Phoenix and took her out within five seconds of the match really kind of pisses me off because they're just going by looks. It's so scripted now. It's not. It's it's completely predictable. Like back in the day, yeah, maybe there was a couple of lines you would have to say. Maybe a couple of paragraphs it would make you say in a sentence. But you had character freedom. They allowed you to have your character evolve on your own terms. Like Hulk Hogan, for example. You know, at first he wasn't all that great on the mic. But he, I mean, in my opinion, he wasn't when I first actually saw his debut because my uncle actually taped his first debut. But honestly, he wasn't all that great on the mic. But then as time went on, he progressed and he actually was able to reinvent his character on his own. They had tons of character freedom 20 years ago. You can't say about that now because with the FCC and all this other crap and this ridiculousness of how completely prudish our nation has become. You know, it makes it difficult to have character freedom. So I'm not going to completely hate on some of these people like John Cena. Because if John Cena actually did have character freedom, his character wouldn't be so hated as it is now. So honestly, it kind of made me wonder about a few things. Especially about the state of the WWE. Now they're actually going to uh, have their channel. When I guess that when I actually read this article about the WWE Network, and I'm going to actually leave the article down below so people can read it, it seems to me that they're going to probably have their big four, you know, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, WrestleMania, you know, and um, I'm probably missing one, um, the Royal Rumble. They're going to have those ones, I thought they, they, they were going to have exclusively those on their channel. But now they're saying that they're not going to have it, and they're actually going to still have it as a pay-per-view that you have to pay 60 bucks for. I really don't get it. If you're trying to have your own channel, you're not really supposed to have it just reality show entertainment based. Because your channel is going to go down the tubes. Nobody's going to want to buy it. 
the reason why everybody was excited for this channel and excluding myself is because it would definitely save you a ton of money in watching the four big pay-per-views that you watch every year. Now, that I mean, that will save you at least a, a, a fifty bucks, a uh, fifty bucks a, a month, um, having to rent these things. And now that they're having twelve pay-per-views a year, that will save you a ton of money if they have it all on their network, and you won't have to pay for it. All you have to do is just pay for the subscription um, on your um, on your cable or your satellite provider. That will save everybody a ton of money, and that will actually have you wanting to buy it. Plus, that will definitely give you more incentive to try to reinvent your brand. Instead of put pumping out the same old trite stuff that you've been selling people for the last few years. I mean, let's face it, WWE really does not have any competition. So, honestly, you will really think that they will actually have their pay-per-views on their channel. And then have a couple of other things on their channel. You know, to try to have more people to, to watch their channel. Having a network, that's the whole point of it. You want to have your own art or your own artistic freedom without anybody trying to exclude you. Because let's let's face it, USA is not how they used to be during the Attitude Era. USA had a lot of uh, didn't have a lot of restrictions, but now they do have restrictions. It's causing a lot of issues with Raw, and that's the reason why Raw, in my opinion, I thought that's what I read in the article. Unless they change their mind or whatever, whatnot, things change in the media. But honestly, that's the reason why they were going to leave the, the leave USA when their contract is up and take it to their new channel so they can have their own freedom. Like HBO has its own freedom because it's a premium channel. And I thought they were going to have WWE Network as a premium channel. But it seems to me that they're not going to have that. They don't know what they're going to do. But they have four months to do it in, so I really hope that they do it well. But honestly, the one thing that bothers me before I sign off for tonight is the fact that I read that they are going to honestly do a movie on Chris Benoit and his double murder slash suicide. I'm not going to blame WWE with this because they're trying to literally stay away from this entire issue. But whoever decides to make a movie about this, that's tasteless. That really is tasteless. And yes, even though it's been years since this happened, it's still very tasteless. It's hurtful for the families that had to endure what has happened. I mean, no one really knows what Chris Benoit was going through. They're saying that he had a lot of mental issues, especially with the fact he had huge steroid use. The thing is, I w I'm not in his shoes. I have no idea what's go what was going on in his head. And the fact that they're doing this is completely tasteless. So I'm hoping it's a rumor and I hope they don't go through with it because it's just going to be bad. I mean... It may bring pump a lot of interest, but honestly, it's just tasteless. Nobody should do that. Nobody should really do that, and I'm hoping it's just a rumor. And and the state of Alex Riley, that's another thing before I go. Does anybody know what's going on with Alex Riley? And I'm not saying it because Alex Riley going nuts or whatever. I'm saying because when I they're saying he's in the doghouse. Why? I've been looking for like why he's in the doghouse. Like I've been trying to Google it and I haven't been getting anything on it. All I got was like this article saying Alex Riley's in the doghouse and how they say Triple H is a joke because all the people he's picked has completely, I mean, something's happened to them, whatever, either injuries or they're leaving or whatnot. So that's the only thing I saw. But if anybody knows what has happened to Alex Riley and what's going on, not even Alex Riley knows what's going on. For those that actually are friends with him on Facebook, he doesn't even know what's going on. So it's probably a huge rumor, but if anybody really knows what's going on, just leave a comment down below. I'm curious. I'm interested. Just let me know. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off with ramblings coming out of my head late at night, but I will see you later. I will see you the next Raw. Well, I guess it'll be the Slammies. Peace out, y'all. See you later.